Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Traders Summit. And with me today, I have a very, very special guest. I have Kevin Ferry, which, you know, a lot of you guys and gals might remember him from years ago. He's known as Fearlicious. Then he's also known as Hooper Quant, which is a private Twitter handle, which those of us that have been blessed have been able to follow Kevin over the years, follow him. And many of you actually probably remember Kevin every morning on CNBC probably 10 years ago, but for the previous 10 years to that with Joe Kernan in the mornings and Mark Haynes, you know, Kevin, you are a legend and I'm so happy to have you here today. So welcome. Uh, well, thank you, Blake. Uh, I don't know if I'm a legend, but uh, you know, uh, we've known each other a long time. I have a lot of respect for what you do. So I'll come out of hiding every once in a while to talk to people like you. So it's thanks for having me on. Oh, it's so great to have you on. You know, I, I, before we actually get started, I wanted to say, that one of the first times that you and I met, uh, I invited you, you were still on CNBC with like Becky Quick in the mornings. And uh, you, 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 we flew you in from Chicago at the time. You came into Dallas to talk to a small group of traders. One of those traders is in my chat room today. And he said, when you talk to Kevin, tell him, I said, hello, his name's Rick. So he's, Rick says, hello. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You still had it. That's a good sign. Yeah, you know, we've got some of some of our traders that have been in our in our community now for 15 years wow. or so, and he's one of them. So yeah, anyway, a lot of a lot of people remember you from back in the day. And 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 I, I tell you, Kevin, um, you know, in over the years, and I've had an opportunity to meet you in person, obviously, several times since then. Uh, I have a lot of respect for what you do. You, you've always had a, you know, you, you always knew exactly what the bond market was going to do. And going back 10 years ago, the bond market's actually at the same spot as it was 10 years ago. But at that time, you said that rates were going to go higher, bonds were going to move lower. And they did. They did pretty aggressively too, um, you know, about a few months later. And, yeah. you know, we're in a different, we're in a different world now, different place, but the market's still in the same place. So how do you feel about bonds where they're at right now? Uh, kind of the same way again. So it's maybe we should talk every 10 years, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm a proud neo-inflationist. I, 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 the what little I speak, I, I have not been in the transitory uh, realm. I think the, the post-pandemic world is not going to look like the old world. And we've spent a year with this kind of general view that things will return to normal. Um, I, I don't think they are. I think the Fed's done a great job. I'm a big advocate of the Fed's long-term uh, policy moves, and those policy moves are going to lead to higher inflation rates by design. And so uh, I, I've teased other people to say, well, if you think that inflation is transitory, then you're, you're a new wave Fed hater. You're bashing the Fed in a new way. And so... Uh, uh, I don't think supply chains improve anytime soon, and we can't keep looking past the the reality, the short-term reality that sometime in the future things are going to change. As traders, you deal in the now, and the when is it going to happen? And so, the, uh, I, I again don't think there's a lot. I mean, rates have gone up a little bit, uh, so you can see some some talk of between taper uh, and whatnot. But uh, there's two Fed hikes now priced. And one thing I would say, Blake, that I was thinking about when I said I talked to you is there is no longer a deep, wide and resilient, efficient market for the near term forward rates. What used to be back month euro dollars. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an archaic thing. The system has moved to sulfur. And so I think if there's actually a hiccup coming over the next 18 months, it's in the inefficiency of the the inside of two year forward market to deal with the amount of volume they need may need to deal with. Wow. And so that could cause some serious dis disruptions in the, the, the market. Uh, yeah, I think it could get <laughs> sketchy and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, so far so good. I, I, you know, the reverse repos, there's still a lot of pedestrian views about how the Fed operates and the new plumbing of the financial market, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the first test of the new system post pandemic world is, is going to be easy. And so uh, um, one thing that the Fed has on its side right now is that the treasury is gonna be cutting issuance along with the, the Fed cutting their buying. So those two things may work to help each other a little bit. But I think generally the path to rates is higher and the path to inflation is 
stronger. So, um, you know, I'm wondering uh, at this at this point, if, you know, just I'm speaking my FX mind at this point, you know, is, is that a dollar play, uh, a bullish dollar play? And, and, you know, because it's the Fed that's going to be dealing with it's not just going to be the Fed dealing with higher rates. It's going to be global. Wouldn't you think? Right. It's a great point. And you're seeing some of that in those forward rates on the euro curve already and other peripheral markets, Japan. So it's really going to be about the efficiency of people to lay off these uh, long-term positions that they've had that euro dollar contracts used to be able to do mightily. And so uh, uh, there is a different world now that hasn't been tested and products aren't as resilient and well-defined as they used to be. Um, I think that FX, as you know, we've spoken as a practitioner, has been a tough market for people. Yeah. And uh, but what goes around comes around, and and I think currencies will become more volatile uh, over the 2022 horizon. Um, I would say this, in a general sense, if people are talking to you about trillion-dollar coins and imaginary electronic coins, tune them out and uh, stay with your discipline and stay with the markets that uh, are more fundamentally based. And that's interest rates and fiat currencies. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, 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 and I love to hear that coming from you. So speaking of disciplines, um, you do obviously trade the markets still very actively. And um, I, I know- Not too active. <laughs> well, I'm sorry? Yeah. Not as actively as I- like, I used to. Of course, but you're still in the markets. Yeah. You 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 obviously keep a keep a keep a keep an eye on everything that's going on. And I want to show uh, the people at home every once in a while that they can they can actually see a view of what you're doing. Uh, and and maybe you can explain this really quick. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show my screen here, uh, and you should be able to see. Uh, some pivots on the S&P and the NASDAQ E-minis. Can you explain to folks yeah. what this is and, and, and how you came across this system? Sure. So uh, basically, you and I are having a conversation, right? So it's starting today. So most people that enter the market, they think their conversation with the market or their interaction with the market starts when they get in. The reality is the conversation with the market starts on the first trade in the first product when it begins. And so what I did back in around 2001 to 2003 was go back and apply a mathematical model to every trade that took place in any product. And I only traded about five things in futures and I was a futures guy. And then I met uh, Joe, which is, is uh, on a uh, really great technician, which is a religion I don't uh, worship at. And he's really good at. So yes. we, what we noticed was um, my system, if you look between the green arrow and the red arrow, is basically where I try and converse with the market. And so from a trader standpoint, the first thing I learned, the smartest trader ever taught me was, you're going to lose money. And I think that most of us, perfect execution, always being right, that's what you think, right? But so the ability to lose money efficiently while you're trying to converse and get positions on is the most difficult part of the trade. And so I do almost all of my risk between those points. And then I don't do anything until it trades the outer, upper or lower point. And so it's somewhat agnostic. Um, and uh, that's why I developed it because I already have macro views about the world and they can force me to lose a lot of money over certain periods of time. Sure. So I think great traders don't have the ability to hold large political views or macroeconomic views that fly in the face of a p &L. And so uh, what Joe is able to do, or Sir Ripsters, as he, we call him now, <laughs> he's a very great technician that understands that charts operate over variable time frames. My work does not have a time frame. In fact, after the GFC, the S&P contract was in the same pattern for almost 10 months. I just don't care. So I just let it play out where when you overlay it with technician technical analysis on shorter time frames, I think you develop a really good risk management system that again, it's easy to make money. 
it's really hard when Edward Scissor when you feel like Edward Scissorhands trying to get positions on and you're chopping yourself to pieces. So that's what real discipline is, is the ability to get your positions on and have them where they at full capacity when things are going your way. You know, that's and I've I've watched you with these algorithmic um, calculations that you've done over the years. Speaking of Joe, uh, Joe and I have probably followed each other on on uh, social media, on Twitter for at least, uh, I want to say eight, eight or nine years. We've we've actually talked uh, uh, verbally over the over the phone before. And yeah. he's a great guy. Uh, and, and I know you've been working with him for so long. Um, so I'm the first to admit, I have no idea what he's talking about, but I love talking to him about it. <laughs> well, he is uh, at Sir Ripters on on uh, on Twitter. So if you guys every once in a while, if you're, you're blessed enough, you're going to get one of these. He'll, he, he posts them from time to time. And uh, just know that these came from the original algorithms that Kevin has put forth. Um, how long how long ago did you write these? Uh, probably 16, 18 years ago. Uh, basically one of my partners in trading, someone else did the original mathematics. And, uh, what we found was he was making a lot of money. And then, uh, on certain days, he, the system would mean revert dramatically. And so, um, what we wanted to do or what I wanted to do was after the great financial crisis, because we were short and, uh, actually lost a boatload of money on the major upticks when the Fed began to intervene in the market. And so what we needed was to go back and look at the, the model and see how we could prevent it from mean reverting. And that was key. And it took almost two to two and a half years of uh, reverse work. Wow. And so if you look at, and cause there is a very basic Fibonacci theory to the work and with, some additional add-ons. But I think that's what I mean by just joining a conversation. If you hear Fibonacci traders go wrong, they're like, oh, I got the count wrong, or oh, the wave was wrong, right? It's because they're entering the conversation at a random spot. Yeah. And so all of this work that we did, and Joe explored it into major, we now run it on every tradable security in the world, um, went back to the original trade of that security, which takes, you have to have no life, uh, which I had at no at the time and, uh, uh, to do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kevin, I, I'll tell you, it, you know, I, I'm, I, I think for, for me being able to, you know, witness what you've done over the last, you know, 10 plus years, uh, personally, and, and going back to watching you on, on CNBC every morning, you know, decades before that, uh, it's been really fun to watch. And I, I got to ask you, if, especially for those traders that don't know who you are, and especially for those <laughs> of us that do know who you are, you know, are you going to be coming back? Uh, we don't, we don't hear a whole lot from you, but I, I'm, I'm ready for the Kevin Ferry big comeback uh, coming up. <laughs> Is that coming? Uh, well, yeah, I w right now I would just say that uh, probably more than you have. Um, I'm really happy in my life. Uh, um, my wife and I are, I'm old, not like you, Blake, I'm old. So uh, I'm out here in the West Coast where I don't have, I'm intentionally off hours. So most of you guys are hot and heavy by the time I wake up and check the market. But uh, no, yeah, I'm really uh, excited about the future again. And uh, you know that, I mean, are you people that know me know I like to sell things. Uh, the default position of the world is long things. So I like to sell things, just, you know, tactically. And I think that uh, it's safe to say that I'll be back doing that uh, more aggressively. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I might be old enough to remember back when there was a blog called The Contrarian Corner. I, I, I might actually yeah, right. remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, Kevin, it, it's, been, it's been probably about uh, two years since I shook your hand in person. I have to say that uh, you look great. Uh, you, 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 you look you. fantastic. And I'm so happy to have you on here on the Trader Summit um, you know, community. And I hope to have you back here in the next uh, month or two. Maybe you can give us some updated views. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you're a quality guy. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Forex will be great again. We all, uh, I, there was, I think, four years where the euro dollar had a 40 tick range and we came out of it in gangbusters. So uh, uh, keep, keep, keep at it. And uh, the main thing is uh, keep doing what you're doing to uh, 
to uh, clue in the next generation of traders. Uh, the pit was a great learning curve. Uh, um, uh, I have made a lot of great relationships from our cash and on down in the pits of the world. And uh, that learning experience is gone for people. So I think you're filling an important uh, void in the, in the industry. Well, I appreciate it, Kevin. So, um, well, we'll look forward to having you back here in the next, uh, hopefully in the next month or two. And I want to say, you know, take care from California. All right. Thanks a lot, Blake. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Cheers.